Alright everyone, welcome back to another video. So you're probably wondering why am I posting two videos in two weeks? Now I'm trying to post weekly videos and everything. What I'm doing today is going out into the forest, walking up creek systems and pretty much seeing what I can find. I don't have an end goal for today except to film a video. So anything that I find, and we were just filming the intro before and a guana came down. So that was pretty cool. He was just chilling under that tree and then he took off of it in like five seconds and he was gone. And I'm hoping that I can find something like a big spider that I can put on my face again. Because um, a while ago I did a video where I put a massive golden orb weaving spider on my face and everyone seemed to love that. And let's go have an adventure. <laughs> inside the log and everything because you never know there might be spiders, centipedes or whatever inside and then you can also put oh look 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 scorpion take a look at that that's one of the things that we were looking for and that is the mildly venomous rainforest scorpion pull him up here hold up I'll get him on the stick oh, he's just gripped to that stick right there and would you have a look at that? So this is the rainforest scorpion. Now this is one of my favorite species of scorpions we have here on the Sunshine Coast. Now this one's mildly venomous, so you do have to be careful. Now scorpions aren't actually insects. They're arachnids in the same family as spiders because these guys have eight legs, while insects on the other hand only have six. And this guy is a mildly venomous species of scorpion. There's over 1,700 of species of scorpions across the world. And um, this one's based here in Australia, which is pretty cool. But if I was to get stung right now, I would be in no danger whatsoever unless I had an allergic reaction. Now that could cause death, so I wouldn't recommend handling them or anything. But if this guy calms down enough, I'm definitely going to put him on my hands or maybe even my face. So scorpions have an exoskeleton. Now, same with centipedes and everything. Now what that is, is you know how we have a skeleton inside of us? These guys have it on the outside and don't have anything on the inside and that just allows more protection and everything. And this species of scorpion in particular, normally you can judge scorpions from the shape of their tail and their pincers. If they've got really big pincers and a small tail, they usually use their pincers to kill their prey instead of stinging it. Now the amazing thing about scorpions is all scorpions are venomous, but only 25 of the 1,700 species of scorpions that roam this earth are lethal to humans. So you do have to be careful of those ones, but if you steer clear, you'll normally be okay. All right, here we go. Scorpion on my hand. I'm shaking right now. I've dropped the stick. That is the rainforest scorpion on my hand right now. You know, he's pretty cool. I think I gotta give him a name so he doesn't buy me. He needs to start with S. Susan. Susan the scorpion. Susan. Right. But isn't that just insane? Take a look at that scorpion on my arm right now. Now, one thing that I always like to do is put the animals back exactly where I found them. So I've got this log back to what it was and I'm gonna put the scorpion back where I rolled him over and everything. All right, so here's what happened. I spent the next few hours looking for a massive spider to put on my face and pretty much only found this. All right, so this down here is what we've been looking for. Now that is the huntsman spider, but sadly that is just their shell. Now what happens every now and then these huntsmen will actually shed off an old shell and they'll look really fresh and everything so that's a big one down there too and um, he'll probably be around this area somewhere but that shell it does look pretty old so that could be days weeks even months old and I don't know where this huntsman will be at the moment but that's a great sign that if you're ever looking for a huntsman spider look for their shells and the huntsman's won't be far away and then after that, it was pretty much just one creepy creature after another. I spotted another member of the arachnid family crawling right across my arm, but this one was a lot more dangerous. So what we just found down here on my arm is a paralysis tick. Now you have to be extremely careful because this guy can send you into paralysis, but normally it's a bigger problem with your pet dogs or small children or everything. So keep them both on a leash and you should be fine. <laughs> Here in Australia, you have to be extremely careful because ticks carry a lot of diseases because what will happen is this guy will be on a possum and then it will be on a bandicoot and it will be jumping from animal to animal and if one of those animals does have a disease, it could be very dangerous for you if it infects you with that. And it was at that point when I realized I wasn't going to find a spider. I'd been looking for hours and I'd found every other species but a huntsman spider. I'd found possums that were just chilling in my shed, snakes that had crawled under the tin and um, I realized at that point that I should go back to why I originally found the scorpion and put that on my face instead. 
Alright, and now for the big moment. Now, I swear this guy's more aggressive than he was a couple hours ago. And I don't blame him. I'm sorry, mate, but I promise this is the last time that I'll um, pick you up or anything. And definitely if he stings me on the face. If he calms down a bit more, like he's got that stinger up at the moment, if he puts that down, maybe, I'll definitely go for it. There we go. Now, my goal here is to eventually put enough trust in this guy that I can put him on my face. But a sting from a scorpion like this on the face would hurt. It would definitely hurt. And I know that. So I got handling down pat. If that was my face then, it would have been fine. So I tried a number of different times to put the scorpion on my face, but it seemed like he just didn't want to. And I don't blame him, just look at me. But I finally got him on a stick, and here's what happened. Alright, and that is a scorpion on my face right now. Now I'll turn the camera around. So, I gotta be extremely careful. I can't have him sting me on the eye, or I could possibly go blind. Mom's behind the camera like, wait, what? Now, if I was to get stung, you'd probably feel a bit like a wasp sting. And I've nicknamed this guy Susan, or girl. I won't assume it's gender. Susan's pretty cool. And please don't sting me, Susan. I should get that as a tattoo, hey? So you can keep these guys as pets. Any animal that isn't endangered without a backbone, you're legally allowed to keep as pets. But this is just a wild one that I just found. And I'm just gonna wait for him to crawl off my face at the moment and hope he doesn't sting me. Because, you know, it's never usually great. Is he going into my hair? Yeah. And yeah, that was it. Shout out to Susan for not stinging me. You're a dead set legend. And I was going through YouTube the other day and I found a clip from a couple months ago when I was on a TV show called Totally Wild. And not many people have seen it, thought I was so sure... What? What's that language we speak? Oh yeah, English. I need to learn that. So I thought I'd just put it in here. Roll the clip. Drone. Check. Camera. Got it. And hat. Already on. Alright, let's film. We are on the road for the day with the ultimate nature filmmaker. Miller has been pointing his camera at the beauty around him for three years. He is going to give us the lowdown on how to create our very own movie. Hey, Miller, not a bad day in the office, am I right? No, it's pretty good, isn't it? This is so cool. And this is your backyard? Yeah, this is my backyard. So is that kind of why you're interested in this kind of filming? Yeah, definitely. I love coming down here and seeing all the different flora and fauna that this creek has to offer. Yeah, for sure. So what specifically do you actually film? Well, it's uh, all different kinds of things from animals. If I see an animal down the creek, I'm going to film it. And it's just amazing to see all the people who love me interacting with all the wildlife and flora and fauna around this area. So you see a plant like this one and... Um... Yep get it up close to the camera, that's it. Alright Miller, when you're ready. Hey guys, so I'm Miller. Today we're down here at my creek system and we're going to be looking for different species of fish that inhabit this creek. Now what we get down here is catfish, eels and plenty of other species. So let's go. At first it started with a small video. Three years on and over 50 videos later, there aren't too many stories that are off limits. Well, there's all different types of species that live in this river. The main three species are eels, catfish and spangled perch. They're the main three species of fish that you can find in this creek. I can tell that you're uh, very familiar with this area. Yeah, I've been living here for years, coming down to this one pool for ages. And yeah, it's awesome to see all the different types of fish that live in this pond. But I'm guessing patience is important because animals are pretty unpredictable. Definitely. Sometimes I can be waiting down here for hours on end before I actually film catfish, perch or turtles. Now, there is so much in this area, so much in Australia, in fact. So how do you actually come up with your videos? Well, obviously I love doing this myself, but then again, people comment on my videos on YouTube saying, can you film a catfish? So then I come down to this creek, film a catfish, and yeah, it's so cool. So is it a lot of planning when you come up with the videos? Yeah, there's heaps of planning to do. You've got to come down to the creek at the right time. You never know, you might not see a catfish for days on end. It's, it's really just a game of planning and luck. Yeah, fantastic. Miller's skills in filming and presenting have grown over time along with his experience. And if his creations have inspired you, all you have to do is pick up a camera. 
So the best thing about this kind of filming is you don't need the most expensive equipment, travel hours to the best locations. You just need a little bit of creativity and you can do exactly what I'm doing right now. It's so cool. Forget the most extravagant locations and the high-tech equipment. Creating a master film for people to enjoy can be done in the simplest of ways. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. It was one of my favourite videos to make. Putting that scorpion on my face really got my adrenaline going, but that's what I love about this channel. Just doing whatever I want, which is awesome. If you like this kind of stuff and want me to keep my channel going, make sure you leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe. And go check out my Instagram. I'll be answering as many DMs as I can the day I post this video and probably a couple weeks after that. So if you've seen this video within the first couple weeks, go over to Instagram and I'll try and answer as many DMs as I can. Thank you so much for watching. See you again in the next adventure.